Live from ClickOrlando.com, News 6 Plus, and WKMG, we're getting results in your neighborhood now at 6.30 p.m. This is the highest April forecast that we put out. We started putting out these forecasts uh, back in 1995. Get ready, one of the top hurricane forecasters of all time says that we could be in for an extreme hurricane season while he's calling for more storms than he's ever put in a forecast before. Good evening, this is News 6 at 6.30, getting results. Thanks for joining us here live on News 6 Plus. I'm Justin Warman. And I'm Ginger Gadsden. When News 6 insider guide Crystal Moyer hit the road for zip code 32771, she expected to end up in Sanford, but discovered a detour. A lot of alligators. Uh, I've seen owls, otters, snakes. What people might find here is peace and relaxation. Get away from the traffic. Where you can find 1,600 acres of wildlife not far from a zoo and an urban jungle with local breweries. And speaking of bars, one of our top trending stories, the local watering hole where a serial killer had her last beer. It's ties to Eileen Wernos she still actually gets mail there. But now at 6.30, police say an investment aimed at cutting down on crime is getting results in Flagler County. Investigators say surveillance video has now helped them arrest a third suspect in a shooting that happened during a fist fight. Police say the shooting happened last month. A teen and a man were also arrested. A bystander was hit during the shooting near South Anderson and East Drain Streets at some Benel. And they are still in the hospital tonight. News 6's Molly Reed spoke with police about how well those cameras have worked so far. This is the camera behind me here on the pole that was able to capture that video that helped the Bunnell police identify those three suspects. It was able to capture everything that happened on this street. You can see the video here. Now, the police chief tells me that as soon as the police got to the scene here, they were able to open their laptops and start watching it, start identifying them. How much is technology playing a role in policing now? Technology has really changed a lot of how law enforcement solves crime rather than just relying on let's say the gunshot victim's account of what he saw where he really wasn't able to tell us a whole lot because he was in a helicopter on the way to the trauma center. At night we wouldn't have been able to find a suspect vehicle that left the scene without the license plate readers and the camera showing them coming on scene and then leaving. Chief David Brandon had the camera system installed after two drive by shootings in 2022 in this same area. This is the video I took in those months after the shootings as the police still tried to find the suspects. When that whole thing happened, it seemed like you guys kind of had to hand it off a lot to the sheriff's office yes. um, just because of, you know, they maybe had more investigative research sources, whatever. How has this helped you guys just as a department in general, like, you know, take these investigations on? Well, what, one of the challenges that we experience is that this community is often reluctant to cooperate with law enforcement. The cameras have been running for a year now. Brandon says on top of catching lesser crimes, they found these shooting suspects, exonerated one of their own officers after a complaint, and cleared up a person accused of domestic violence. We're not using these cameras to watch people continuously. You know, they're here for after the fact. Brandon plans to expand the system, hoping to add two to three more next year, but he says the goal is to not have to use them at all. We really want to build relationships with the community also, so eventually we don't need this technology um, to help us solve crime. In Benel, Flagler County, and Molly Reed getting results, News 6. We have two developments tonight in the murder of Madeline Soto. The medical examiner telling us they will not be able to officially release the cause of the 13-year-old's death. In a letter to News 6, the office administrator wrote this, quote, under state statute, the autopsy report of a minor whose death was related to an act of domestic violence held by a medical examiner is confidential and exempt. Meanwhile, we are hearing 911 calls from when the teen was reported missing. Okay, and then how long has it been, though, since you guys have last seen her? Since this morning. She was dropped off um, at school this morning, and apparently she never showed up. We called um, everyone we knew. No one seen her. That call was made February 26th. Her body was found days later in Osceola County. Madeline's mom's boyfriend, Stefan Stearns, is the prime suspect in the girl's death. As for Stearns, he was arrested two days after Madeline was reported missing.
He's in jail on dozens of charges, including sexual battery on a child and molestation. So far, though, no one has been charged for Madeline's murder. Tonight, we're one step closer to replacing a city commissioner in Orange County. On Monday, Governor Ron DeSantis officially suspended Regina Hill even after she had shown up for her latest Orlando City Council meeting. Hill was arrested last week. Prosecutors say she stole more than $100,000 from a 96-year-old she represented, even buying a house. Now, Hill denies any wrongdoing, but now the Orlando City Clerk has posted a notice announcing a special council meeting is set for Monday, April 8th, on holding a special election to replace Hill as commissioner of District 5. This week, Mayor Buddy Dyer said he hopes that election can be held on May 21st. We will keep you posted. Right now, the future of a never finished neighborhood is underway. The area is a magnet for crime. During tonight's meeting, Palm Bay city leaders will be looking at how to move forward on a plan for a new future for the area known as the compound. It has been the site of several murders. We told you about the Christmas Day murders of a 14 and 16 year old in 2022. At least two other uh, investigations have taken place there since those deaths happened. Tonight's city council meeting started about half an hour ago. They are getting the final draft of a land use report. We'll let you know what happens. Well, we've been talking about it for weeks now. WKMG has hit the road again, this time for the 32771 zip code. And you may know that includes downtown Sanford, but there really is so much more. So what makes this area so special? News 6 Insider Guide Crystal Moyer takes us on a tour. Let's take a drive to the 32771. That's Sanford. Starting on the western end, I visited Black Bear Wilderness Area. This 1,600 acres of wetlands houses a variety of vegetation and wildlife. A lot of alligators. Uh, I've seen owls, otters, snakes. It's a popular spot for locals and visitors to explore. The Black Bear Wilderness Trail is a 7.1 mile loop along the St. Johns River. And while some of it is paved or maybe a boardwalk, it is a remote trail. So if you need a little bit of help, pay attention to these arrows and safety markers that will guide you. What people might find here is peace and relaxation. Get away from the traffic, get outdoors. Our next stop, the Central Florida Zoo and Botanical Gardens, where you can see hundreds of animals, including a rhino, monkeys, and its newest baby, the blue diker. The animals aren't the only attraction here at the Central Florida Zoo Botanical Gardens. You can get a ride on the train. Back on the road to the Seminole Town Center, where Elevate Fun brings new life into the mall. The old Sears converted into a two-story adventure park with games, go-karts, and virtual reality experiences. Now we head downtown with historic buildings and unique landmarks. We've got the beautiful First Street that has the old community feel. Sanford Tours and Experiences Guides telling me the area was a filmmaker's destination for movies like My Girl, filmed here in the 90s. They were looking for old historic homes. This is the world famous My Girl House. The downtown area area is also a hot spot for breweries and bars like Hollerbox and Sanford Brewing. It's just the perfect environment for anything that has a local flair. Uh, it has, it's walkable, it's got a great community. Mr. Imagination's memory wall will capture the attention of anyone walking by using concrete and items donated by locals. This was a sprinkler from the last orange grove here in Seminole County. There's a Jackie Robinson um, pin right here. We have a lot of groups that do use this for a scavenger hunt, but for me, it's truly a memento of the community because almost all of these things meant something to someone. A lot of action in Sanford with a small town feel. Let me know what you like to do in Sanford by heading to clickorlando.com insider. In Sanford, Crystal Moyer, Getting Results, New 6. And a reminder, we're bringing our newscast live to the 32771 zip code. That's happening Wednesday, April 10th from 4 until 7 at Hollerbox German Restaurant in Sanford. We have all the details for you on clickorlando.com slash hits the road. We all hope to see you there. Hurricane season starts in less than two months, and this is not what anyone hoped to hear. This is the highest April forecast that we put out. We started putting out these forecasts uh, back in 1995. 
All right, so that is one of the world's preeminent hurricane researchers, Dr. Phil Klotzbach of Colorado State University. Yeah, his team is not just predicting a busier than normal hurricane season. As he said, this is the busiest early forecast they have ever put out. So the prediction, 23 named storms when the average season sees about 14. They predict 11 of those storms will become hurricanes. That's four more than last year. And five of those hurricanes will become major storms, meaning Cat 3 or higher. Once again, that is two more than last year. Just scary stuff. It really is. And the question is, why so many storms? Well, New 6 meteorologist Jonathan Kegis has been tracking long-range forecasting for months. And on his WeatherWise podcast, Jonathan said it all is evidence, and it points to a strong La Nina forming. Yeah, so that... Look at the activity increase in the Western Caribbean and in the Gulf of Mexico in a La Nina season following a strong El Nino. And again, that is what we're heading into for the 2024 season. But unfortunately, not only do we have the opportunity for an active season, it has the opportunity to be an impactful season. Again, I always say I don't care how many storms form. If they're all for the fish out in the middle of the ocean, I know shipping channels are impacted and that's not good either. But as long as they're not impacting humans, I'm fine with that. It looks like here just by taking that La Nina following a strong El Nino, we could be in for a, an impactful season as well. Okay. Goody. <laughs> The good, as Tom likes to say, the hits just keep on coming. In announcing the hurricane forecast, it was pointed out the ocean is already warmer than it should be for this time of year. And as we all know, warm waters tend to make hurricanes stronger. If you look at the current sea surface temperatures in the tropical Atlantic and you say, okay, we're going to warm at the slowest rate that we've worn between now and the peak of the season, you're still talking water temperatures that are, say, like top five warm. Um, so unfortunately, I think this is at least a little bit of somewhat of the die is cast for 2024. That's always the caveat, and we always say with all of our forecasts is, you know, they're certainly not perfect, and, you know, obviously it only takes that one hurricane near you to make it a busy season. And here I thought that that was what we all used as the, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Tom, we always say it only takes one. Right. Right. It's mantra. Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrell is here hey. now, and Tom, you know Phil Klotzbach, uh, for two decades. Yeah. yeah. When I interviewed him last Tuesday, you'll see that interview eventually on the hurricane special coming up June 2nd. Uh, we sat down, he's mic it up, he goes, we've been talking to each other for 20 years. Wow. We, we had Phil. I thought Phil was a child when I met him. He still looks young. He does. <laughs> he still looks super young. Great guy, though. And we were talking about how it was going to be an active season, mm -hmm. and he was hanging on until today, April 4th, to unleash his forecast. He knew last week that it was going to be this. He knew. Oh. He just wouldn't give me the numbers. He couldn't yeah. do that until today. What's before. your reaction to seeing this? Uh, it's crazy. I'm not shocked. And I reminded Phil of the 2005 season. After we'd gotten pummeled right. in 2004, mm -hmm. I was talking to Phil about uh, what the upcoming season was in 05, and Dr. Gray, rest his soul, was still alive then and was the main guy. The guy that taught Phil a lot. And I said to Dr. Gray, that's, that's quite a forecast. That's really active. And he kind of looked at me and went, ha, I could have gone higher. Oh, oh, so gosh. I said, Phil, when your forecast comes out, that's going to echo in my ears, right? And he goes, yeah. So I think he could have gone higher. Mm. What? I think 23 is, is his shot at what he thinks is going to happen. But if he'd said 25 or 26, I wouldn't have been shocked. He just doesn't want everyone to pack up and leave the state of Florida. Well, or, you know, he thinks that's going to do it. But later... Um, he'll do another forecast June 4th mm -hmm. or June 1st June, in that window there somewhere. And then another one in August. And my guess is by August, we'll have to ramp that up. Oh, my God. Okay, and you <clears> are <throat> known for being calm Tom, calm right? Tom. And Conserves. you never <laughs> send us into a panic. Well, no, so you to hear panic. you say, to hear those words coming out of your mouth. I ought to get your attention. But you can't <laughs> panic yet because, like, last year was active, 20 named storms. We got tagged sort of by one. Right. Idalia, that was it. So it's not to say that we're going to get hit four times in 44 days right. like we did in 04, mm -hmm. but it's going to be active. We're going to be talking a lot, dodging a lot, holding our breath a lot. All right. Well, Tom and our mm. entire New Six team of meteorologists, they will be here to stay with you every step of the way this hurricane season. And Tom always says, don't panic, but do be prepared. We're here to prepare you, not scare you. Yeah. Get busy. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, Tom. Bye. So does this hurricane forecast have you concerned? At News 6, we're reaching out to get your reactions about this. So take a look. Tonight's News 6 at 630 question of the day. How concerned are you with this hurricane season forecast? 
I'm very concerned. Weigh in at clickorlando.com. I'm so, you're not asking me. Well, it looks like everyone's in the same boat, though. Slash react right now. Use your mouse and slide it to show where you stand from not at all to all the way to highly concerned. I can't imagine people are not at all. It's uh, very right now. Look at that. Oh I think gosh. we're in the same boat. You see those numbers, Ginger. I saw them this morning. Yeah. I go, I'm not even going to post this because mm. it... <clears throat> I know. What can you do? What, what can, can you, you do? do? You just got to take those numbers and just hope for the best. And of course, if, if one does hit, we'll be here with you every step of the way. So ah, we right. still have Deep a couple breath. months. Deep we got breath. a couple months yeah. before all this happens. Mm -hmm. So just digest it, flush it. And then we'll revisit this <laughs> I'll come, flush it come all right. June. Oh, we're going to flush it. <laughs> and if you have your phone handy as well, just open up your camera app, scan the QR code you see on your screen. The link will take you to the poll. We'll have those results tomorrow right here at 630. I imagine that they're probably going to be around the same. Because it is. Uh, it is it's pretty concerning. concerning. It yeah. is. And no surprise, the hurricane forecast is one of the top stories trending tonight on clickorlando.com. Number two is a story that had you reacting since we told mm -hmm. you about it last night at 630. Yeah, you can own a piece of Disney's <laughs> Fort Wilderness Resort, even call it your home. News 6 insider guide and morning anchor Crystal Moyer spotted ads on Facebook Marketplace for tiny house resort cabins. <laughs> So they're actually the cabins Fort Wilderness guests stayed in for about 25 years. A company called Dream Life Mobile Homes is selling these cabins. They're about 500 square feet with one bed, one bath. They come fully furnished as well with that pull-out couch, mm. TVs, beds, appliances. All of that for just shy of $50,000. And that includes delivery within 25 miles of Orlando. That's Awesome. Okay, so since Crystal's story, a number of people re reached out to us asking about those log cabins. So we wanted to know, what would you do if you got one of these things? Mm -hmm. On our Facebook page, Gina says, I want a bunch of them and make my own loop. I love Fort Wilderness so much. Miriam says that they should be repurposed for the homeless. And she is not alone, but there's one comment that's gotten the most reactions so far. Alex perhaps overshared by saying made baby number oh, two Alex. in one of those. Good times. <laughs> How's that for Alex? a ringing endorsement for one of these places? <laughs> you know, uh, you know <laughs> if the mood strikes in the cabin, there you go. The little Marvin Gaye on. We'll be oh uh, continuing the conversation throughout the evening. Head over to clickorlando.com or the new six Facebook page to join in. That took a turn and I didn't see it coming. Old Alex there. <laughs> That's our third top trending story. Here's the headline for this one. A serial killer drank her last beer at this Florida bar. Here's her story. Oh. We're talking about Eileen Warno. She was arrested there in January 1991 for the seven murders she committed. You probably know the movie Monster, of course. Yeah. ClickOrlando.com, New 6 digital producer Anthony Talcott got the whole story from the founder of the bar, Tony. And Ginger Justin. Now this biker bar is on the side of South Ridgewood Avenue in Port Orange, and it may look like any other biker bar, which there are a lot nearby, but locals know this one as the last resort bar. It's got a pretty dark history. Now it gained recognition around the country in the 1990s as a hunt for one of the most notorious female serial killers in U.S. history. It was even featured in the movie Monster. Now, Wesley Brewer, who works at The Last Resort, says Eileen Wernos was a regular customer there, and she sometimes even stayed the night. Now, he told me Wernos still has mail sent to the bar, even though she was executed in 2002, though it's mainly magazines and other kinds of subscriptions. Now, the bar's founder, Al Bullings, told me that there were undercover police drinking with Wernos the night that she was arrested. Outside, guests can find a vigil dedicated to Wernos, including information on her aliases, birth name, and the men whom she killed. Many bricks along the bar's exterior wall are painted with messages about the serial killer herself. And just down the street, another infamous location connected to Wernos still stands. Now, prior to her arrest, Wernos reportedly stayed in room 9 at a motel called the Fairview Inn. However, the motel has since been bought out and redubbed the Scoot Inn. <laughs> okay. That's yeah, pretty appropriate. Scooters and stuff, right? No, no. Now, no. Jester, Ginger, <laughs> if you want to find out which room it is now, you can head to my story in the homepage of clickorlando.com. Back to you. Uh, okay, so what you're saying is we can still stay in the same room, but now there, it's probably changed because it's now a different place. I would assume so. It's got a new number, but uh, good luck trying to get in there. Uh, from what the manager tells me, it's booked out pretty often because it's so well known for being the last place that she stayed in. So 
people who in are your right dark. mind. I, I just, <laughs> people I'm are crazy. so dark. Yeah. Not a place I'd want to stay, but I also didn't get a chance to get a good look. But. You did? Oh, I did not, no. no. Oh, okay. To, oh, my gosh. I was going to say, time, I worry so. about you sometimes going to these places. So. <laughs> I'll have to go back there sometime to see if I can get a better look. Yeah, so. don't, Anthony. Don't it's fine. That. It's fine. Yeah. It's okay. Thank you so much. That's yeah, a no really problem. fascinating yeah. story. I suggest if you really want a, uh, a good movie, Monster is excellent. It Charlize is terrifying. Is, yeah. You don't even recognize it's her. It's crazy. Yeah, for mm. sure. All right, construction will soon be revving up for a brand new expressway to keep up with our boomtown growth. But this one won't just feature concrete, and asphalt ahead on News 6 at 6.30, how it will recharge some kinds of electric cars while linking two corners of Central Florida. But first, getting results for the historic corner of zip code 32771. Midway is known for its flooding woes, but a potential solution is in the works. News 6 investigator Lewis Bolden has those details. You're watching News 6 at 6.30 live on News 6 Plus. We're getting results in Lake Mary, Melbourne Beach, in all of Central Florida. We'll be right back. Brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. Welcome back to News 6 at 6.30. We have hit the road again, this time to the 32771 zip code, which, as we have told you, includes downtown Sanford. Yeah, it is also home to the historic Midway area that is just east of downtown Sanford, situated between Lake Monroe to the north and the Orlando Sanford Airport to the south. The area is prone to flooding, and for years, homeowners have dealt with streets and yard flooding because of poor drainage. Yeah, News 6 investigator Lewis Bolden has uncovered the flooding in the past and found a major fix is in the progress. When News 6 asked viewers what they wanted us to focus on in 32771, Clarissa Butler wrote, the Midway Canaan areas of Sanford and county commissioners' plans on the drainage problems that have always plagued this area. The Midway area is prone to flooding. When it rains, homeowners say streets flood, yards flood, and drainage ditches hit capacity. And it has happened for years. Still, the area is attracting new buyers like Marlene Bettenhausen and her husband, who recently bought this house on Granby Street. The house, we love the house. 
but the problem was this big hole in my front yard. That was the only downfall of the house. The hole is part of the outdated stormwater drainage system on both sides of her driveway. We do have a really bad one. This is all open. The Bedenhausens bought the house knowing that a fix is on the way. And they're going to cover up this nasty hole in my front yard. Bedenhausen Street is part of the Midway Basin Drainage Improvements Project. According to this memo from the county, a $32 million project funded with federal, state, and county funds. This is a, a major infrastructure project. Emory Green Jr. is the executive director of the Midway Coalition, a group of citizens who have advocated for Midway for years. The 49-year-old also grew up in Midway, a roughly five-mile area which includes part of the city of Sanford and unincorporated Seminole County. We felt our community was not and had not been prioritized. And this money that came from the American Rescue Plan mm -hmm. Act of 2021 was instrumental in kickstarting this. The drainage improvement project is broken down into phases. It includes constructing new stormwater facilities, replacing existing pipes, and constructing a new eight-acre floodplain compensation pond, among other improvements. In front of Bedenhausen's home, the old pipes will be replaced with much more substantial drainage pipes like these. And everything you see in red on this map will be new piping. Oh, I think it's wonderful because they're going to come in, they're going to fix my hole in my yard, they're going to fix my problem, and they're giving us easement, they're pay, you know, paying us an easement amount. Bettenhausen says the county is paying her about $20,000 to access her property to make the upgrades, and we're told that's happening for more than 170 homeowners across the area. It seems like this is a win-win. I think it's wonderful because there's going to, it's going to create jobs, we're going to have a better way of life here because of not all the flooding. All right, so whether you're a local or new to Sanford, you're invited to our live newscast in the 32771 zip code. It's happening next Wednesday, April 10th from 4 until 7 at Hollerbach's German Restaurant. We certainly hope to see you there because it's always a good time. The last time it was fantastic. That's right, it was. It was a great setting. This is going to be a great setting as well. Come on down. We, we really hope you can join us. I've been talking to a lot of people as I've hit the road myself doing Boomtown stories. Oh, yeah. Everyone's down to come out. So saying you're down to come out and then coming, coming out, out, two different things. So yes. we'll see, but come on out. All right, so to keep up with all the Boomtown growth in our area, the Central Florida Expressway Authority is breaking ground on a new highway that will connect drivers from Lake and Orange Counties. Yeah, but the five miles of road work comes with a twist. The Orange Expressway will connect US 27 in Lake County to State Road 429 in Western Orange County. It's also going to include new technology to charge some electric cars on the road. The project is being called the first of its kind because it will include a lane to charge specially equipped electric cars. We got an example of what it looks like through this video. Officials with Lake County say plans for the project have been in the works for years now due to the massive growth happening between West Orange County and Claremont. This new road is a pioneering example of how roads can be planned and designed sustainably with less impact on our ecosystems and with more applications of transportation technology. State Road 516 will link residents to jobs, education, and much more across our counties and open access to some of the region's most dynamic communities. It's all expected to be finished in late 2027. You know, I don't really care about the uh, electric car part of that, but that connector is very important to get people off of Schofield Road. Mm. Uh, it, it's, it's bogged down. They just paved it a couple of years ago. Wellness Way is taking shape out there. 10,000 new homes being built around Oof. that corridor. So that is going to be so crucial for the folks who live in Lake County and work in Orange County. It's very people-y out there. Very much so. <laughs> From Orange Groves Enough. to people. Yeah. That's what's happening. Uh, do you guys take the 408? Every day or something? No, I no, don't. You live in places no. where you don't. I take the 408 from Western Orange County in every day. And I just noticed this week this week that they've painted the big shield. When I go to get on the 408, there it is, 408. Oh, and okay. Like we're L.A. or someplace. You got it. Well, you have to because all the different connectors out right. there. It's yeah. crazy. All of a sudden, oh, yeah, I'm getting on the 408. But I know that that's never been there. That's new. <laughs> We're growing up. Change. Yeah, we are. We're growing up. <laughs> Let's talk weather. Hurricane forecast came out today. If you missed the first part of this newscast, Dr. Phil Klotzbach, Colorado State University, released his 
preliminary forecast for 2024. There you go. It says 23 named storms, 11 hurricanes, five of those becoming major. Compare that to an average season. It's going to be active. Why? We're hot. The ocean is so warm. Steering currents have gotten weaker, so the water's staying in place and bubbling, becoming super hot. And La Nina is coming back. El Nino is fading. Put all that together, hot ocean, no El Nino. That's a good mix for trouble. No radar echoes now. Soil scale number for tomorrow on your, for tomorrow's Friday, right? Today's Thursday. Yes. Yeah. How did we get here so quick? For your Friday, windy, dry tomorrow. It's a nine on a scale of one to 10. Almanac page four today, we hit 78 for the high. Currently in Orlando, we're holding at 72 degrees on the light Orlando, delivering Hope Cam 72. It's beautiful. Relative humidity is only 33% in Orlando and only 35% in Mount Dora with a reading of 76 degrees. Temps where you are, 66 in Gainesville, 67 in Ocala, the village is 69, 72 Kissimmee, and the warm spots down here in Melbourne at 75 degrees. Satellite and radar together shows you the location of our big cold front. Now right now, that front is pushed all the way into the islands, and that's okay, we're done with it. Backside of it, wind from the northwest. As long as the high pressure center is in place, we stay clear. Reinforcing shots of cooler air come in for Friday and Saturday, so no big warm-up for your weekend. And tomorrow should be beautiful, Saturday should be great, Sunday is good. It's going to be a week before we get rain back in our forecast. Low tonight, 49 in Gainesville, 48 in the Villages, 52 in Kissimmee. And in the Southern Bavard County area, 56 degrees will do it tonight in Cocoa Beach, 55 in Melbourne. Overnight low officially in Orlando is 55, staying breezy. Here's tomorrow. Your forecast is sponsored by Florida Lottery. 8 o'clock in the morning, 56. By noon tomorrow, 70. And a daytime high of 76 degrees. Come look at the week ahead. High tomorrow, 76. Then 77 on your Saturday. Sunday's daytime high is 82. Monday is the day for the partial solar eclipse. Weather here in Florida is looking pretty good. Only partly cloudy. So if you have the glasses or you have your box to view it, you should have a good show. Tuesday, 87, and one week from now, a high of 89 and a 30% chance of rain. Enjoy these next few days. All right, thank Correct. you, Tom. Well, some good news this year. You can face your worst fears <laughs> and nightmares sooner than ever. No, the relatives aren't coming to town. I did not write that. Uh, Universal has news about Halloween Horror Nights starting sooner than you think. Details when News 6 at 6.30 continues. Stay with us back in two minutes.
All right, it is spring, but we are already talking about the scary season of Halloween. Oh yeah, one of Central Florida's scariest events will return a little sooner than expected. Actually, a lot sooner. Yeah. This is crazy. Universal wow. Orlando. Today, they announced that they're going to bring back Halloween Horror Nights <laughs> earlier than ever, starting <laughs> August 30th. Oh my August Lord. 30th, yes. Yeah. Park officials say this year's event will have 10 all-new Movie quality houses, five scare zones as well, but they didn't specify any theme yet. Although they should, because mm. it's coming up pretty soon. Listen. Believe it or not, <laughs> tickets are already on sale. After this year's hurricane forecast, they need a hurricane house. Uh, keep Oof. up with the parks at clickorlando.com slash theme parks. And once you're there, you can also subscribe to our In The Loop Theme Park Scoops newsletter. They drop on Fridays. I guess they push it up because they know people want to go. It they is know, people popular. It's very popular. They will go. Yeah, yeah. 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 got to get the VIP experience, <laughs> though. You don't want to wait in line. All right, thank you so much for watching News 6 at 6.30. Stream News 6 online anytime on our New 6 Plus smart TV app. We break news on clickorlando.com. See you back here tonight at 11. Thank you. We've now expanded how long.